So mm. this is lecture six, uh, six um, and today we are going to learn about hydrology. So far, what you learn in this class is a different type of processes that remove pollutants. From now on, you'll focus more less on pollutant, but more on the water itself. You know how water moves, where they come from, how the rainwater itself becomes stormwater, and how do you calculate that? And uh, because the quantity is also important. Green infrastructures are designed first to reduce the quantity of stormwater on the surface. So that's why it's very important to know the quantity aspect of it. So next two or three class, we are going to learn that. So that's why it's called hydrology, So because it's about moving up water. Again, um, office hour every Wednesday, but I also want to tell you that office hour doesn't mean that you cannot meet me any other time. You just have to email me and, and then set a time with me. Because I know that you know one hour, maybe you have class during that time or some other thing. So you can always meet me any other time. Um, just you have to email me and set that time. Homework two, I extended the deadlines to next Monday. The reason is it has a lot of mass balance equations and stuff. So uh, these are very uh, quantitative questions. And I want you guys to try. And today, um, in the last 30 minutes, what we are going to do is we are going to go through those each question. So we'll have five different rooms. Each room uh, has one question. So you guys will solve here and also discuss with each other and solve. And I'll be there helping you um, answering or solving that one question for your room. And so that means we'll solve all questions because each room has one. And um, now after that, your responsibility is to answer any questions. You know, once you learn how to solve it, if anybody has difficulty on campus where they ask that question, try to answer that. Uh, that way you can you learn how to explain. The more you engage in this way, we all want to learn a lot more. Um, this is something we discussed before recording. I just want to mention that by this week, you got to have a project. You know exactly what, um, what topic you have. Uh, that way, um, will uh, because once you know those things you know what are the keywords to search and what are the hypothesis means what's the research questions that you are trying to answer um, for instance you know yesterday and during the office hour we discussed about one group where they wanted to have um, green infrastructure design either for a parking lot or a mall um, or it would be near los angeles river or a particular site or it could be more about reducing the pollutants that could end up on fees or in fees. Uh, so once you, I just want you guys to know that objective very clearly. Let's say your project is about using green infrastructures to reduce the pollutants in the fees in the river. That means your keyword will be, what are the pollutants that ended up in fees? Then you'll realize mercury is one of them. Lead is another, PCB. Um, that's another. So that means you are going to start searching PCB, mercury, all that in stormwater. And you look for some of the, uh, um, the, the references. Uh, so that means, you know, it's very important that you know what your specific goals are or what's the uh, overall motivation of the problem, what problems you are trying to solve. And that will tell you some keywords. And I want you guys to learn how to search uh, references, report, on that basis to help you out. Uh, so by end of this week, you've got to have that written on that uh, Google Doc, start writing those. That way I can give you feedback and say what keyword to search and you then each person will search a specific keywords and find some report references and link, put the link on the Google Doc. That way everybody can start discussing. Um, um, so that's all for the announcement. Uh, there is no quiz today, uh, not today, I means uh, there is no quiz this week. Always it will be even week. And there is no uh, new homework I'm going to release because uh, you still have to work on the previous one. Um, class objective for today's class, we are again going to learn about hydrology, mostly water quantity, how water moves in on the surface, what affects it, how much storm water you have to deal with, because that's important. If you know the quantity, you, the design will depend on the quantity. Uh, so these are the different questions you are going to answer um, um, by end of this class. All right, so urban hydrology. Urban hydrology means you now hydrology is movement of water. Urban hydrology means you now what's how water moves on in urban area. 
the um, professor. Yeah. Did you, um, I can't find the lecture slides that you posted for this lecture. Oh, okay. Let me, uh, give me a second. Let me see if, uh, if it is not there on CCLE. I might have well, forgot. Like there was some urban hydrology slides from last class that we didn't go over, but I'm not sure if it's the same. So I just wanted to double check. Oh, okay, okay. No, that's not the same. This is a, this is a new one. Okay. So let me, let me just double check because I, that means I didn't, I forgot that. So let's see. Um, okay. This is week three, right? Yeah. Okay, got it. So I, I didn't put it. Oh, let me put it now. Uh, this is uh, week number. Number six. Okay. All right. So this is a um, lecture six in filtration rainfall. That's the I just uploaded it, so you might see in next few seconds. Yep, got it. All right. Good. Thanks. Okay. So uh, I'm not going to read all these questions because you'll learn that. Um, so first of all, you got to know now when you say hydrology, it means how much water. The source of water is rainfall. So that means you have to understand how to quantify rainfall amount in a system. Once you quantify that one, then the second thing is what happens to that raindrops? When it hits the ground, where that raindrops are going? Some of them will go to the tree, some will go in filtration, some will become runoff. So you have to quantify all different aspects of it. That way you know how much stormer will end up near your green infrastructures. So these are the stops you are going to learn now. So this is just a um, slide just to uh, tell you, you know, why it is important. Um, so the first thing, these are the different variables that um, engineers think of when they design green infrastructure. So imagine this is your green infrastructure. You know? The reason you are designing green infrastructure is number one, you wanted to have more clean water. You want to protect the, uh, the water quantity as well as quality. So for instance, you have fish here or your home. You don't want to, you want to minimize flooding as well as lower pollutions. So to do that, uh, you got to put green infrastructure in upstream so that it clean the water, okay? So now the, the first things that engineers have to think about is uh, what's the size of green infrastructure? What different types of green infrastructures? And those depends on two things. Number one, your end goal. Um, end goal means uh, pollutants and other thing. And second, also depends on what kind of, how much amount of storm water you are going to receive. Let's say you are going to receive, uh, you know, let's say thousand cubic feet of water uh, per day. Uh, so if you want to treat all of them, how you are going to allow that thousand cubic feet of water to, uh, to, be, to be treated within quick time? So that depends on whether you will have a retention pond or bioretention system or anything else. So that's why it's very important to, to uh, quantify the volume of water you are going to receive at that locations. And that depends on two factors. One is the catchment where the, all the water comes in from where the water is coming to your locations, which is here, written here. Uh, and second is the amount of rainfall you receive in that area. So these two are important. So first is rainfall. And second is the catchment characteristic. Characteristic means what's the soil type? Uh, what's the surface, you know, what they are, they're impervious surface or all that stuff. So impervious surface or, or what kind of things in, on the soil, you know, and how many, you know, how much storage it has, because if you have a big uh, pond there, you know, it can receive all those water so you not have that much water going in the system how much trees there you know so these are all the things that counts and also the climate because you know even you receive storm uh, rainfall doesn't mean that all of them become runoff you will quantify that and so if it is rainfall then how heavy the rainfalls are you know the intensity so you will learn what is intensity means you'll also learn about durations how long it has been raining uh, because you cannot design a green infrastructure to capture all water. 
you have to design in a way that you know it is 10 years or 100 years term uh, we'll learn about that what does that even mean 100 years term uh, and a 10 years term so these are the things you have to decide so those concepts will keep coming so but ultimately it's all about volume of water you are going to treat so that volume of water depends on the different processes that could happen in the catchment area. So I explain it here. This is something you already know from C-153. I'm just going to explain it now. So again, mass balance means everything that comes in has to be uh, what leave the system and what's the remain inside the system. So that's why I write input means every all the water that receive in that catchment area. Output means everything that leave the, wa the water set area. And storage means what is trapped inside that area. By the way, water set means you know everything that you know, that contribute run up to that spot. Okay. All right. So what is input? The only source of water in that location most likely is rainfall. So we call that precipitations. Okay. Uh, so it's not salt precipitation. Every time I say precipitation here, think of this more as a rainfall. So this is rainwater. So precipitation, what's leaving the system? You have, a, this is only in, one in. And what leaving the system is, number one, some of them will be evaporated out. So that's evaporations, evapotranspirations. Because very hard to know difference between evaporation, but transp transpirations means how much water that um, leaves or the trees, you know, move, take, move from soil to, to atmosphere. We can quantify that, differentiate between those two. So that's why they are combined, ET, that's what we call. And uh, then uh, you have also uh, infiltrations. Infiltration is, um, so this is evapotranspirations. And then infiltration, how much is lost below ground because into groundwater, because you are looking for how much it stays. This is the control volume, okay? And then there'll be some will be runoff. That's the runoff is this. Okay. Uh, and this is important for your green infrastructure design because that's what you want to treat. And then there'll be some storage. Storage means you know there'll be rooftop, you know, there'll be some water stuck there. Some of the water will stuck on the grass or the leaves. You know, leaves will also capture a lot of water because they, you know, that's why I say you know you can shake it. So that's the storage. Or there is a pond, there is a hole, gutter, all that stuff will capture those so storage. So it's very important to know. So this is the mass balance, but also it's very important to know the unit of them so that you know what that means. Precipitations, the way it is measured is how much inch of rainfall. If you remember how they say inch of rainfall. So the unit of precipitation is length, right? So this is length. Then second is runoff. It says how much runoff you receive. Nobody says I, I got 10 inch of runoff. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. What they say is how much cubic feet of volume or cubic meters or cubic millions of gallons, right? So this is volume. So runoff, the unit is volume. And uh, if you think of uh, infiltrations, how much infiltration occurs, um, that's also people talk about in terms of length, like two millimeters into ground or 10 millimeters into ground, because that's a flux. So this is also people right in terms of length scale okay so this is length this is volume evapotranspiration is the same thing as how much of a receive because you can capture the volume how much water is being um, evaporated so this is also kind of length scale storage is volume okay it's like how much cubic water so now you cannot add length to volume so what that means is you have to change precipitations. Anytime you see length, you are also normalizing per unit area. Okay, so that means there is an area term there. So if you actually do calculation here, you have to multiply length time area equal to volume. Okay, so this is length, volume of water, and this is area of water set. So when they say precipitation is already normalized to area, that means you, know, you already account for that area. But if you are actually doing mass balance, you have to multiply the area of the, um, of the water set to do the mass balance. But this is just an equation written so that you know what that means. 
So now that you know this one mass balance, based on that, you can calculate the runoff, which is R. Um, R if you rearrange the equations, it says runoff equal to precipitations minus uh, infiltrations and um, evapotranspirations and storage. So what does that mean is if you account for whatever amount of rainfall happens, not all of them become runoff. There will be some will be lost because of infiltration, evapotranspirations and storage. And so those are, uh, if you put all of them together, you can say that some fraction of pre total precipitation will be lost. So that is beta. Let's say that's a constant, you know, beta times P. So again, empirical term, okay? So if you put that one, it becomes one minus beta times P. So that means it becomes, what you can say is runoff will be always some constant. So this is some, some empirical, empirical constant. Time precipitations. As I say, runoff is a volume, precipitation is a length. So to, to change precipitation into volume, you multiply area. So that's why it becomes rainfall intensity times area. So this is area, this is rainfall intensity. Which is usually length scale, uh, inch per hour or something. So in fact, this equation will be useful for you to predict how much amount of water you are going to receive in the green infrastructure. So this is called rational method. Rational method means, you know, what it means that amount of runoff you can receive is a, is proportional to the amount of rainfall in that area, as well as amount of uh, the area of the catchment, because the larger the catchment, more rainfall it will receive. And C is an empirical constant, but it has a value. It has a physical meaning. What it means that the maximum amount of runoff you can receive is equal to inch per uh, the rainfall intensity times area. So the C value is always a maximum value of C will be one. One means everything become runoff. There is nothing, no loss of water. C equal to zero means there is no runoff. Everything become uh, lost in that storage. So you don't receive any runoff. So, um, but normally it is between um, zero to one. Um, and what it means that if you have C is higher, that means you are receiving more and more runoff. More fraction of rainfall become runoff. And that's what happened in urban area. When you have lots of impervious surface, that's exactly what it does. It, it limit infiltrations, it limit evapotranspirations. There is no storage because there is no hole. Now everything moves very quickly. And so the C is, when C become higher, that's what we call runoff coefficient. C become higher, you get more and more runoff. That means that, that urban area really, really need more green infrastructures so that the C become lower and lower. If it is completely green, the C is going to be much smaller. Uh, so we'll explain about each of these storm now. So the storage, one of the things you have to think of is vegetation, green infrastructures. The storage storm, it depends on the rainfall abstraction. What that means is how much of rainfall is, is in, intercepted in the tree canopy or as well as any of the small holes and stuff. For instance, if you spray on a, on a grass lawn, if only up to some point you will start seeing any runoff. Otherwise, everything is trapped in the, the leaves. So rainfall abstraction means intercepted by vegetations, ground surface, depressed area, all this that you see. And that basically will reduce the runoff volume. And by having green infrastructure, this already helps because of this process. So again, there are, um, this is just a one way to think of, you know, roughly 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 inch of rainfall is uh, intercepted by tree canopy. Uh, not all trees are basically have higher amount, coniferous trees. Um, so it tends to be greater, the intercession is trying to be greater, greater for coniferous tree versus deciduous. Uh, means now where you don't have much leaves, you know, they lose all the leaves in the winter. Uh, so that means if you have more leaf density, you, you capture more, uh, more water. Uh, so that means less runoff. And also depression storage, that's basically 0.0 in very small amount uh, for the paved area. But if it is a, a forest area or the plants 
or the litters, all these leaves, they can also trap. Even if it's a dry leaves, they can soak a lot of water as big as 0 0.3 inch. So these are important part of the uh, quantification when you see. All right, so uh, as I promised from last um, yesterday comments, I put the quiz um, in between. Now you got to answer this quiz. We just discussed that. Which of the rainfall abstractions uh, are influenced by leaf density? Circle all. Oh, well, how do you know how to circle? Because you can just uh, the, choose the one you think it will be um, most likely. Or either of those two, because there are two things you can, you can improve. Uh, or two of those answer will be correct. Either of them is correct if you choose. Okay, you have 10 more seconds to whatever comes to your mind, just answer. Professor? Yeah? Is uh, for the units for rainfall um, intensity, is it just length? Yeah, length for uh, time, like uh, two inch per day or two inch per hour. Okay. So length over time. Okay, I'm gonna end the poll. Okay, so the question was, which of the rainfall abstractions are influenced by leaf density? So if you have more leaves, interception is about how much water can be intercepted from rainfall before it touches the ground. Obviously, if you have more leaves, it will be, so definitely A could be one answer. Depression storage. Depression storage is all about um, you know, the, the bottom floor. So. So there, you know, obviously we are not saying that all the leaves are falling there. No? So obviously if you make that assumption, it can have some effect, but so this is mostly about how many holes. So this is not the correct answers. Evapotransmissions, you know, creation. So that is another aspect of it. Now, if you have more leaves, it will also have more evaporations uh, or evapotranspirations. Transpiration will be more. So that means C can be also answers. Infiltration is nothing with a uh, deep density, so that cannot be answered. But if you have to choose one, obviously interception is the very obvious answer. Okay, more more likely this one. Okay, so that's the one aspect of it. The next thing we are going to learn is about infiltration. Infiltration means how much water will uh, go through the soil into ground. Uh, so again, you already know the way to um, what actually influence is the soil property. So if you have soil with high hydraulic conductivity, they can infiltrate a lot, okay? So uh, infiltrations, but what I didn't tell you is that what, that hydraulic conductivity can also vary uh, with the moisture content in the soil. It means if your soil has high uh, different moisture content, the hydraulic conductivity will vary a lot. Um, partly, infiltration also depends on dry versus wet soil. Imagine you have a very dry soil and if you put a drop of water, it will go inside very quickly because it soaked them up. Um, but if you already somewhere saturated, every rainfall after that is becoming runoff because there is no capacity to soak that water. So that's why it's very important to know what is the moisture content in your soil before the rainfall happens. That's why you can see a lot of time in real real world, uh, you get the flood warning if you already have rainfall the night before. Because that means if you get more intensity rainfall, there is no way this is gonna go anywhere else. It will just all become runoff. Um, so infiltration depends on these factors. Um, you know, infiltration is all about uh, movement of water inside the soil. It depends on the dryness of the soil, so it depends that's in the factor one. It also um, depends on the capillary pressures or suction, how much it can um, shock inside. That depends on um, uh, um, that depends on the, the particle size, because if you have very small particle size, they can have more capillary. 
Um, but at the same time, it doesn't mean that they will infiltrate water faster because if you have sand, sand will infiltrate much faster. Infiltrate, um, infiltration rate depends on moisture content. As I said, dry soil will have soak more water. Uh, if it is a wet soil, it is not going to soak that much water. But hydraulic conductivity itself also can vary based on air because sometimes air can block water moving because if water is moving and you have lots of air in the soil, it has to find a way to get out because air cannot, air has to escape. You know, if there is no way to escape, then they will they will block that area. Uh, capillary pressure that depends on pore size, amount of water already filled in the pores, and hydraulic conductivity. So these are the different factors. I will upload a handout so that you learn all this because it's written there. Uh, so far, I didn't provide any handout for this one. We have. Uh, so there are many different ways to to um, uh, predict infiltration rate. So this is one thing I wanted to show um, just graphically um, that all the amount of rainfall that you receive will not become infiltration, uh, not become a runoff. For instance, this graph, the way to interpret this one is, uh, let's say this is the rainfall intensity, okay? So this is like, you know, imagine this is like every, just saying every 10 minutes, let's say. So what does that mean that this first 10 minutes, your rainfall intensity is this much. Let's say one inch per hour. The next 10 minutes, you get become two inch per hour. Then it's become like five inch per hour or 10 inch per hour. So it, the rainfall intensity decreases. But because you know the, the very first drop of rainfall doesn't mean that it's all going to become runoff. What it means that this is the infiltration rate of the soil. So this one is infiltration rate. So normally you can assume that everything is same. No, all, so all soil will have constant infiltration rate all the time. That's not true. That's why Horton equation is basically saying that your infiltration rate will be much higher initially because the soil dry, so it can soak a lot of water. As the pores are filled more and more, it will decrease. After a point, it will become steady state. So what does that mean is that you, everything above that, when the rainfall amount is below that, all the water becomes infiltrated into ground. So there is no runoff. So that means you know, all you are saying is everything, only this much area is becoming runoff. So if you say this area equal to runoff volume. Because rainfall intensity is inch per hour. If you know the area of the uh, area of, uh, of uh, area under curve, okay. Um, because the uh, x axis, uh, y axis is length per time. So this is L over T. This is time. So if you multiply, it becomes time. So so area under the curve is equal to length over time times time. So this becomes length scale. Length scale means inch of water. And if you know the water set area, multiply that area of water set or the catchment area, you, be, you get the volume of water that you have to treat. So the assumption here, the only thing that you have to remember is that the initial infiltration is much higher. The reason is because it's so a lot of water. As, the, as we come filled with water, it's not going to uh, fill more. So how do you predict this? Uh, so this is basically infiltration rate, Ft, is a function of initial, so this, this formula, okay? And everything is given here. So F0 is the initial infiltration rate, which is the very highest rate, the very beginning when there is no rainfall, time t is equal to zero. And then as you see, it is, it is high here. So that's Ft um, zero. And then it decreases at certain rate, uh, exponentially or, or certain rate k. And so that one, that rate decay coefficient is also depends on different factors. So this is um, for different soil type, you can, you, can, uh, you can assume this number. So as long as you know the soil type in that area, you pick this number and you plug the value Fc over there. Okay, that's the... Uh, Fc is a steady state infiltration rate. Okay, so that's here. Fc is here. What is 
whatever that steady state after a point. Um, okay, all these value, basically all these values are already given to you from the table and you can plug that value and you get the answer. For instance, for different soil type, your K value is given here and different FC value is given um, based on whether which unit you are using. Using In this table, it's millimeter per hour or inch per hour, all this value. And so plug those value for F0, FC, K, you'll get the answer for how much infiltration rate at different time. So this is Horton infiltration parameter. Again, this equation you'll use only rare case, uh, but just know that how the concept work. Um, example, using Horton equation, find the infiltration rate at time t equal to two hours for a Dothan Lomi sand. Okay, so that means it give you some soil type because that determine the capillary, all that stuff. So if you see Dothan soil type, that's here. Okay, so all the numbers are given to you. T equal to T zero. Um, it says that the rain, uh, rainfall duration is four hour. For this event, it takes um, 0 0.05 hours to reach the interception capacity at which time infiltration begin. So that T zero is this value. If you see up to here, this first time, you know, that T zero, that's the time, no matter how much amount of rainfall, it doesn't really, um, have any runoff. Um, so once, so these numbers are given. So based on the table 5.1, like here, for this soil, you get all this value. And you just plug the value. FC is given, this, all these are given, and you get the answer. Um, again, I'm not expecting this to be a long question or short question even in the, in the exam, but I expect you to know the concept so that you can answer quiz. Um, so there are some um, there are some uh, demerit for having Horton equation is that it is it assume a lot of things it doesn't really account for it's not dynamic it doesn't matter how much rainfall it receives in that area it doesn't really matters how much uh, moisture already there so it doesn't account for a lot of factors so that's why it's not very accurate. Uh, so people use green up equations for to account for initial amount of moisture already present in the soil uh, when you account for this. So these equations, that's why I say theta is the moisture content. It's theta S means the moisture content uh, when it's completely saturated. And theta I is the moisture content for the initial amount. Um, initial means now before you start recording. So this account for if your soil is wet before it rainfall happens. And this value is capillary suctions that depends on the soil type. Ks is the saturated hydraulic conductivity of the soil, which is already know what does that means. F is the total amount of um, uh, infiltration that accumulated in the soil. So this account for if you have already rainfall happens before, how much of the pore space is already filled. Uh, so that's the F value. Uh, and so if you know all this value, we can get the, uh, the infiltration rate uh, using this uh, particular equations. So um, you can solve for all that, uh, but again, I don't want you guys to go through too much, but just know conceptually, what does that mean? Infiltrations uh, depends on if you have high capillary. So if F increases, if you are, if he, uh, the, the capillary suction increases. Okay, that means if it is dry, it is previously dry, it is going to have more uh, infiltrations. Theta S minus theta I, you know, that means the relative difference between the moisture or the amount of pore space still available for water to infiltrate into ground will also determine how much infiltration rate, which makes sense. If it is completely saturated, uh, then obviously you don't have enough any water for water to go. So that will become zero. So that means at that point, uh, the, the infiltration is same as saturated hydraulic conductivity because this term will be zero. And same thing, if you have already a lot of water infiltrated into ground, it is not going to, uh, so if this decreases, that means if you previously you don't have enough water accumulated, you have more infiltrations. 
So think conceptually of all this before you answer these questions. Um, so these are the different term over here. So that's all it means that this, this table can tell you uh, different numbers, how to, how to get this value, um, the, the capillary shocks and parameters, all that, and such and hydraulic conductivity, because you got to use these two terms, K, S, and P, these two terms and all those things, F value will, you'll get from this table, just so that you know this exists somewhere. But you are not going to, again, um, you may not use this at all, for your um, project, but at least it's there just in case needed. Um, so summary, you know, at the end of this, you know, what we should have learned is that you should know by now what affects the runoff volume. It affects by abstraction, it affects by infiltrations because more the infiltration, less of less the runoff volume. But there are other aspects that we didn't discuss um, which uh, which is related to runoff coefficient is the is the as you remember what we calculate is the runoff volume depends on C rainfall intensity and area of catchment and this runoff coefficient is means coefficient if C equal to one all runoff okay C equal to zero no runoff. So ideally you want the sea to be as small as possible so that you have less and less flooding, more infiltration or more uh, capture. And in fact, green infrastructure does that. It makes the overall fee value of the entire catchment as uh, lower than one or less than. But there are other factors you have to think that can increase the sea. One is slope. If your area slope is much higher, then every raindrop it receives, it doesn't really matter what soil type. It has more gravity energy to to drain water from there. Uh, so it depends on the soil type infiltration. So it's hydraulic conductivity, it depends on vegetation. So runoff coefficient, I will just write this way, runoff coefficient increases if your slope increases, because that more runoff. A runoff coefficient increases if your infiltration decreases, because it's less decreases, that means more runoff. So that means I'm going to write this. If infiltration decrease, runoff coefficient increase. Vegetations. Vegetation, if you have less vegetation, runoff coefficient will be more, means more runoff is going to happen. Of if you have more impervious surface, more runoff. So if impervious surface increases, runoff coefficient increases. If the vegetation decreases, because less abstraction, your runoff coefficient increases. And then hydrometeorology means uh, desert versus mountain, all that stuff, you know, like a, what kind of climate area. And the final is rainfall. If you have heavy rainfall, you're more likely to have runoff a lot. If you have small runoff, rain, rainfall intensity, you will not receive that much runoff. And that's because you see this graph over here. If your rainfall amount is very small over here, below the infiltration capacity of soil, you'll never have runoff. So that's why it also depends on how much rain, rainfall you receive in that area. Okay, so that's all concept for infiltration. So let's see how much you learn. Um, we have a new poll now. Which period of the rainfall event, the infiltration rate is high? The beginning, at the center, at the end. The answer is this graph. Okay, I ask at what time infiltration rate is high. And you have 20 more seconds. I'm just going to put the relevant figure here. So this is the, I'm asking where the infiltration rate is highest in the time scale of rainfall. A is beginning, B is center, uh, C is the end. Okay, I'm going to stop the end the poll, share the results. As you see, 
Most of it is choose A, but I just want to mention that initially the soil is dry, that's why infiltration is high. As you have more and more water, more of the pore space are filled, it, become, it decreases. And finally, it becomes saturated hydraulic conductivity. So it is highest in the beginning because when is the soil is so dry that you know, everything soaked. Uh, professor? Yeah? Uh, just to make sure, um, on, that, on that graph, um, a couple of slides back, um, mm -hmm. that the, um, the sort of bar curve with the rainfall intensity is just some like hypothetical arbitrary um, rainfall intensity over the period of time, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, just making sure, thank you. Yeah, but that's how they measure because they don't measure, uh, every 10 minutes they measure the rainfall intensity, it's not continuous. I will learn about that, why the graph look like that. Okay, so, um, so now that we finished this one, I want, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll learn a lot about rainfall. Uh, so it's right now is 4.46. Let's meet at uh, uh, 4.55. Okay, so we have nine minute break and we'll be back um, then.